Okay, today we are going to be making some water glass uh, to make a foundry for our um, melting aluminum. <coughs> this was my original plan for my foundry here, uh, but I, I cut it on the seam that was in here, which is probably a bad idea. I should have cut it much higher to give myself a bigger base and smaller top, but I, I, I'll probably come up with something different for actual foundry metal. Here's my perlite that I'm going to use. Let's see if I can even have you guys in the frame. Just a little bit. Okay. So here's my perlite that I'm going to use. Uh, the water glass that we're going to make today mixed with the perlite. Mixed like a, a fireproof cement type <coughs> mixture. Uh, at least I've seen this in the video. And I'll, sh I'll show you a link to that video when I'm done here. Um, i got to weigh out stuff. So I've got a container to weigh out my different items in. I need 100% uh, lye. And it has to be 100%. You have to read the container and make sure it's 100% lye. Uh, or so the video I saw says. And it's a drain opener, so you look in your drain opener section. Uh, I found it in my uh, uh, True Value hardware, and they had it locked up in the in a cabinet, so you might have to ask somebody for it. And I'm going to use, uh, how much of this? 200 grams of lye. And then you need silica gel. And the video I saw said to use silica gel from those silica packs you get in like your shoes or something like that and just start collecting those. That would have taken me a long time. Uh, and then you smash them up and you mix them up and that's what you use. But I'm going to use <coughs> what I hope is the same. Flower dyeing art. It says silica gel right there. I don't know if there's anything else in here. The odd thing is, is when I look at this stuff, um, there's this little blue particle in here. And I think that's an activating agent. I don't know if you can see that or not. I think that blue particle, <coughs> when it gets moisture in it, turns pink and then you can reactivate it by microwaving it and removing and removing all the water and then it turns blue again so I'm not sure if that blue and pink activating stuff in there is a silica gel so that may actually cause a problem we're gonna find out though because that's what we're using I got a big bag of it from the uh, craft store it's for dehydrating flowers I don't, anyways so those are your two main ingredients plus you need distilled water <clears throat> not sure why you need distilled water versus regular water, but that's what we have because that's what he said to use. I need five, I'm sorry, 300 grams of that flour dyeing, our silica gel, and I need 500 milliliters of water, distilled water. So this is my only container that I had that had milliliters on it, so I'm going to use this. I don't know how well those measurements are, but we'll see. He also called this stuff by another name. Instead of lye, he called it sodium hydroxide. So. You may find it some other way if you're looking for it, but it's 100% sodium hydroxide or 100% lye. <coughs> so we're going to get started here, get all our uh, mixtures measured out, and then uh, these are containers that we're going to put it in when we're done, I think. We'll see if it goes in there. It becomes more of a gel than a liquid. Uh, I've got over here, I've got one of my magnetic base stoves on here so it doesn't fall over as I'm working on it. I've got some stirring devices that I got at Goodwill, a knife and a spoon, uh, some kind of spoon, not really. And I've got a little stainless steel pot. You have to do this in a <coughs> stainless steel pot or Pyrex, he says, because if you do it in a glass pot, it will actually ruin it because this stuff will actually melt glass. Uh, and the aluminum, I assume it will be, it would also affect the aluminum, so that's why he says stainless steel. <coughs> so I picked up a little $2 pot at Goodwill, and that's what we're going to work with today. All right, I think we're ready to go here. <coughs> I'll need my... Look at my stuff here. It says stainless container, pyrex, lye, then water, and then silica. So the lye goes in... No, no, no. Add the lye to the water. So you put your 500 milliliters of water in the pot. That is 500 milliliters of distilled water. <coughs> I'm kind of glad that they had... A color took, so I don't know which one's which now. That's the silica, because it looks pretty much the same afterwards. So this is the <coughs> lye. You add this in, and you stir. You add it slowly, it says, and you stir while you're adding. We're going to find out how many fumes come off this now. I think this may be stainless. I think this may be silver. Silver plated, so maybe I won't use that one. I think this one's stainless. Stainless china. So we'll just stay away from the silver spoon that I got. It's just plated silver. Who knows, maybe it'll kill the silver off of it. <coughs> Add silica gel. 
Okay, here goes. Supposedly this is going to fume up really bad. Get really hot. This adds slowly. I'm not sure why. Oh, there it goes. You probably can't see what's going on in here, but it's starting to get a cloudy look to it. And this is basically just drain cleaner, so it shouldn't be too dangerous. Alright, there's that. I just got a leaf in there, so that'll probably just totally destroy the whole thing. Oh, I can see the... Yeah, it's starting to... starting to break down and come to... A you can see the smoke coming off of it. That's cool. Okay. Now it says to slowly start adding the silica. <coughs> so let's do that. It comes up over the edge because of the blue stuff. Oh, it's doing something all right. Ooh, man. Holy cow, stepping back a little bit, that's putting off some fumes. I don't know what it's putting off, but man. <coughs> Ooh, I'm gonna put my mask on. That's putting off some fumes like you're in a laundry mat. <coughs> <coughs> Holy cow. Well, it's not ready for all that. I don't think that blue stuff was supposed to be in there. Not sure what that blue stuff's doing to it. It is going nuts though. Holy cow. <coughs> oh, we're gonna have a problem. Well, right over the edge. Maybe I shouldn't have used that blue stuff. Not sure what it does. It definitely doesn't help the stuff out in any form. <coughs> I'm glad I'm doing this outside now, not in my house. Holy crap. I just splashed a little on my finger. I just splashed a little on my finger and it burnt me. <coughs> Alright, well that's everything. I don't know what we got going on here. This is a little more dangerous than I thought it was going to be. Holy cow. It is just amazingly scary how hot this stuff is. It is very hot, and it's uh, clumping up into a rockish crystal stuff. I don't know. I don't know if it was supposed to. Be. I thought it was supposed to turn to a gel. So, but I do have to bring it to a boil. He said still on the fire. So, I'm a little worried that the blue stuff may have actually messed the whole thing up. It was all just clumped up, kind of. You guys can see that clumpy stuff, but look, if you're looking still, look at that. Clumpy rocket stuff, and the rest of it's just liquid. kind of smells like I'm in a laundry mat.
Alright, we're gonna move up to the fire. I gotta light this. I'll be right back. I got a match. I don't have a match. I never have a match on anyone. You light this first. Can't really light it afterwards. And he said it would start boiling. And then, uh. You'd be able to take it back off there. So that it wouldn't stop boiling. Which is why I need to get my gloves handy. I love gloves. I've spilled some on my asphalt driveway. <coughs> we'll see what that does to the driveway. Alright, we're not, never did come back to a real boil, but we're starting to get that film on the top, which is good. So, and I have gone through some alcohol to keep this thing going here. It's been going for about 20, maybe almost 30 minutes now. And I never did get rid of these clumps, but I'm thinking I'm not going to at this point because they're pretty rock hard. And I don't know that I'm going to get rid of them, so I might just skim those off. There's a lot of liquid below that, so I think we're fine. <coughs> I'm going to just keep going in for a while here until it seizes on my knife. See how it's just starting to seize there? That's what we're looking for, is that seizing on the knife. And that's about what we're getting now. We're just starting to get there. Not completely. See, as it hits more air, it starts to seize now. That's really what we're looking for. And we're almost there. Once I get that, then I'll pull out whatever clumps are left in here. And we'll let it cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. I'm getting this boil and this effect here. I'm going to at least pull this lump out. I don't know that it's doing any good anymore. I can't get it to get any smaller than this. So I'm going to take the lump out. And break it off to the side there. Call that done. And I don't know what we'll do with that. We'll just call it. i got two more lumps in here that I'm going to get out in just a second. We were seizing up until it started to boil again. Now it's starting to boil again. And I don't think these little lumps are doing any good at this point. Okay. So that's all liquid now. Oh, one more lump. It's all liquid. Oh, starting to seal across the top of it, like he said it would do. He did mention that it would uh, seize up on the knife, and as you can see, it's seizing up on the knife. Start stirring this a little bit. Make sure that it hardens up real quick as it cools down. I hope we're where we need to be. I think we are, though. I've been boiling for, I don't know, almost 40 minutes now. Put a leaf in there. That'll be a combustible. We don't want combustibles in there. So now i got to get this down to temperature a little bit while I continue to stir it. And then we'll pour it into the uh, plastic containers over there. Ooh, it's still warm. Not super hot, though. All right. I'm not going to try to record myself pouring it because I'm a horrible pourer, so we'll be back. A blue container of water glass. And I've got it open just a little bit because it was kind of hot still when I put it in here. And I dripped all over the side and I got it on my fingers a little bit. And it was actually kind of hot on my fingers. I, was kinda, I wasn't sure if that was the heat from the stuff or if it was actually the lye burning my finger. I don't know. So I've got it open just a hair uh, just so that it... I'm going to leave it like that until it gets down to a lower temperature, because it's pretty hot. Um, and I'm going to tighten it all the way up. And it's staying in a liquid form. I guess that's good. That's what it's supposed to be. So that's one container. So anyways, that's what I have right now. I'm going to make one more batch. And then I'll have enough, I think, for more than enough for my foundry. So I'll post this video, and we'll move on from that point. I'm not going to show the next batch, but we'll move on. And I'll tell you if I find any differences in the second batch.
Anyways, the next step would be to uh, take this, mix it with the Perlite, and make the uh, rest of the foundry. We'll see if this is going to work for a foundry. I, I've seen it in the video I watched. It was used for a uh, forge, not a foundry. But my goal is to try and use it for a foundry. So, anyways, that's what we have. <coughs> that's where we stand. I'll catch you guys up on the next video.